I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Board Game Breakfast, a show about board games and the people who play them. I'm Tom Vassell, your host. I'm going to be joined by a bunch of people who love board games and know a lot about them, and I agree with almost all their opinions. Maybe. We'll talk about that later on, but it is a week. This is the final week of the Dice Tower Kickstarter. If you like our show and you want to consider supporting us for 2020, then this is your chance, or your last chance this week anyway. So check it out at DicetowerKickstarter.com. We have some really cool rewards that we're going to be giving to our backers, and we hope you enjoy them. And to those of you who donated, I thank you tremendously. We're going to be closing out the Kickstarter. It's going to be ending this coming Friday around midnight, so we're going to do a little bit of a live closing it out, playing a few games live here at a mini marathon of sorts. We did reach our goal where we'll be doing Doing a 24-hour marathon. There's other exciting things in the works. Uh, I just worked, talked to Rodney Smith. He'll be coming in to do a top 10 list with us. And speaking of all of that, if you missed our top 100 games of all time, go check it out last week. Meanwhile, let's get started with the show. So here's something different that I found on the internet this week. So in America, in the city of Harrison, this uh, store, Division Arcade and Board Games, or Diversion, I'm sorry, Diversion Arcade and Board Games, they hid a couple treasure chests with actual gold inside them. Now, the value of the treasure chest starts at $100, and they said if no one found it after a while, they double it to 200 then 400 then 800 uh, And if someone did find it, they could bring the, there's a, the treasure chest need a key, you bring the key, you bring it to the store, and then they unlock it. And they're hidden in places that people can get to and such. This is a fascinating thing. They're, they gave some clues. There's a Facebook group. I haven't really been able to ascertain if anyone has found the chests yet. But this is a neat idea, that sense of exploration to find something, to find buried treasure. I mean, as a kid, we would search for arrowheads. You know, every once in a while, a kid would find an arrowhead. And you're like, wow, look what I found. Or you just had this dream that you would find that treasure, that black beard. Somehow drove all the way inland Pennsylvania to Allentown, where I lived, and had buried a treasure chest somewhere. Maybe we would find it. This gives kids a chance to find the clues, to follow the clues, to figure it out. And it's not a prize that's going to blow people's socks off but a hundred dollars is a hundred dollars and so I love this idea and it's run by a board game store and more business for a board game store I think it's a unique interesting promotion and I hope it works and I'd like to see more stuff like this Hi guys, I am Randy. I'm Alan and we game together. Welcome to another call video. What do you think? Which one's the key pile this time? They're pretty even They're this pretty time. Pretty even this time. Um sorry, this is the That's key pile. That's the key pile, absolutely. Let's talk about a backyard builder's tree house. It's not that great. It's not. But the kids really liked it. See, I wanna try it one more time. We can keep it a little bit longer. Let's sure. try it one more time. <clears throat> Love letter I love so much. I'm obviously keeping this one. Yeah, I mean I think I could definitely see that one going though. <sighs> Uh, this Time's is hard. Up. This is hard. Best party game. I love this game. It doesn't get played. Biggest? Enough. No, it does not. We Biggest need to play last. It more. Seriously, tomorrow, let's do it. Do it. For all of our game buddies. Mm -hmm. Rhino Hero, the big boy. The this super battle. A, yeah, super battle. No, it's the big boy. Oh. I love Haba. Haba, I love you. Keep. Yes. Uh, Raccoon Tycoon, love that game so much. That Come cat on, expansion man. coming soon. Want to play? It's beautiful. I love it. It's amazing. Space Base, so fun. Yes, and I this love is, it. goes to seven now, which we haven't played up to seven yet. We so I'd be not. interested in how it's going to go. So we I do. think the extra players will actually be okay. I like games that give you stuff on other people's turns. So it's staying. Quacks of Quedlinburg, oh my gosh, how many times have we, we have played, played this, game this game? I could teach this. So many times. In a straight jacket with my eyes <laughs> shut okay. in the dark. I have sure. no idea what I'm talking about. Safari Turbo. We were gifted this um, by a guy who made it up for his like kid's school. Hilarious. Like I, it's fun. It's really like a roll and fun. it's a roll and move. <laughs> yeah. Game, Which but is not it's my actually style it's pretty good, and I think our kids will like it. We haven't played it with them. That's yet, what so. I want to try. All right. And the cell pile. Lots of good stuff in this this time. <sighs> yeah. Dual Island. We have so many two player games, and we just don't really ever. Reach for this one. You know, we could probably get more money for that. It's got the old Pandasaurus games logo <laughs> on go. it. 
<laughs> Gates of Loy Ang. We played it once. I got it for a good deal. I was just kind of okay on it. Maybe we'd play it one more time before we get rid of it. I don't know. Mission Red Planet. Now, this is the opposite. I love this game a lot, but we have played it quite a few times. A lot of times. So I don't necessarily I don't pull it out anymore. I'm good, Mission. War of the Worlds. Um, this is Ellen's choice to get rid of. I think I would actually keep this one quite My a bit. My opinion went good. up by the end of like our third play. I would fine. definitely like to play this at least one more time before I get rid of it. Fine. Bad. And Sierra it. West. What'd you think of that one? <laughs> Remember we hated it I so I, the first much play, on our first I play? It. It's one of those things I, where my opinion went up again. Honestly, I just really don't like it. Not for us. Just no. It's just not for us. It's pretty, but yeah. <sighs> too long for what it is. That's what I got to say so about it. there you it. go, guys. Part two. That's what we got rid of. What did we get wrong? What did we get right? Let us know. Keep it to yourself. We'll see ya. Bye. Hi, everybody. Hello. We are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about Carpe Diem. This is a tile laying game from Stefan Feld. But before we get into that, uh, let's talk about what we're doing to try to achieve better health in our lives. All right. And as a runner, I have moved indoors because I live in the Midwest. The problem with running indoors on a treadmill is I get really bored really fast. This is where I need your guys' help. Can you give me any suggestions to make running on a treadmill more fun? Please help. Help me. It's so boring. All right, well, enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to run on a treadmill more, just period. <laughs> but Carpe Diem, this is a really fun game. That It's a tile lane game. You're drafting these tiles from this main board to put on your personal board. You're trying to build this little city and get all these different buildings built. They all have special abilities when you build them. And it's super fun. Uh, one of the great things about this game, which is true for a lot of field games, is that it plays really well two, three, and four player. It scales well, and you feel like if you're playing four or two, you're really still getting the full, the fullness of the game. There's a really clever mechanism where there's kind of a border around your personal board that kind of encourages you and incentivizes you to kind of build certain things in certain places. I really like that part of the game. It makes it tricky. It really adds a level of planning ahead that I, I think is fantastic about this game. Uh, it also wouldn't be a failed game if you weren't punished for meeting certain objectives. So balancing your board and those objectives is like so much fun. Yeah, we really love tile lane games. If you were looking for a step up kind of a tile lane game, let's say from something like Patchwork or Cottage Garden, this game is something you might want to check out. It is a lot of fun. We've enjoyed it, and it is staying in our collection. All right, if you want to hear our full thoughts, be sure to check out our review by going to our channel at Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. We are on YouTube and on Facebook. All right, well, this is Ryan. I'm Bethany, encouraging you to have a happy, healthy breakfast. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs> So what's coming from the Dice Tower this week? Well, uh, the Dice Tower itself, we're out of the country at this moment of you seeing this. We're on the Dice Tower cruise that's happening. Um, but uh, Dice Tower West, by the way, not too far away. So uh, that's, good. that's exciting. That's going to be happening next month. But anyhow, um, we are, Ambi is doing her top 100 games of all time. Or at least they're starting. In fact, they've already started yesterday. So hopefully you're enjoying that. We're also posting, uh, when we did a 24-hour marathon, we are breaking that up into chunks and posting that so hopefully you enjoyed that you'll see some reviews and stuff near the end of the week me and we're gonna do a head-to-head -head game my Q&A which is normally on Monday will be today is going to be Wednesday of this week so hopefully you come back there and uh, there's just other videos and such will be coming out near the end of the week we're we'll doing a live play on Friday so lots of fun things coming up we hope you stick around and enjoy them Hi folks, my name is Andy and welcome to Portable Gaming, the show about games which are fun to play in pubs and cafes. Today I want to talk about a fantastic little small box game by Dr. Reiner Knizia, the game designer who never sleeps, and that is Kariba. Now Kariba is a very simple game. You and your opponent are trying to get the most scoring cards you can from the watering hole in the centre of the table, and you do this by playing cards from your hand. So on your turn you may play a single card to its space on there, every card is numbered from 1 to 8. However, as soon as there are more than three cards in a stack, so if I play the six here, you then get a chance to take all of the cards from the next lowest stack. So I'm going to get all three of these cards here. And you'll keep doing this until you run out of cards entirely, building up a score pile as you go. End of the round, the person with the most point cards wins. Take a note of that, and the game recommends you play three rounds to see who's the winner. And that's it. That's how simple this game is, and that's why I really like it, because it's one of those wonderful games that fits a lot of age groups. So I could play this with my young nephews or kids, and be a very just simple counting game and paying attention to hand management, and it'd be fine, we'll have a nice time. Or I could play this with a few of my friends, where we're all able to identify the kind of things we might be doing and trying to recognise the moves we're all going to make. And it goes from being this cute little animal game 
to being a bloodthirsty psychological warfare and that's kind of what makes it so much fun there's a lot of games that kind of fit like this depending on the group that you play with changes the kind of game you're going to play and that's really good in terms of portability it is fantastic these are great cards they're nice and hard wearing you might be able to get sleeves from i don't know you've got a cool little collapsible watering hole here fantastic little box this is a tiny box it might be smaller than oink game boxes i don't know um the art of course is stunning that doesn't help the portability but it is lovely it's got the cutest meerkats and giraffes i've ever seen and it's a fantastic little small box game so if you're looking for an all age a small box game you can just throw in any bag take out for a quick game somewhere i can highly recommend kariba anyway thanks very much folks i've been andy and it's your round hi i'm jordan uh, this is a new series I want to do about board game definitions. I have found that as I'm explaining games to people, they uh, don't always know the terms that we use within this little niche of a hobby that we have, and we need to, I don't know, just be mindful that everybody doesn't speak the same language as us. Uh, sometimes we need to remember that people newer into the hobby might not know them. So you might know these words, but there are other people watching this that might not know what all of these words are. So um, here's an example of what one of these segments might look like, and I'll be bringing more of these to you in future weeks. Polyomino pieces are pieces that sort of look like Tetris pieces. They kind of um, are a geometric shape that have all sorts of different uh, ways about them. These are from Patrick. Patrick is a really popular game that has polyomino pieces. In that game, you're going to be fitting them together and kind of like a puzzle, just like that. Um, another popular one is Blocus. Here's a piece from Blocus. And in that game, you're not actually putting them together. You're uh, putting them diagonally to each other. Uh, polyomino feels very similar to the word domino. Uh, a domino might look like this. This is from the game Cobra Paw, but it has two pieces just like a domino. Or um, this is from my little version of Ingenious that has the two pieces like that. That would be a domino because it has two. This would be a polyomino, which has multiple pieces. That's it. Okay, and other things that I review. Today we'll take a look at a website called Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. And maybe you know about this website. I didn't know about this website till a few years ago, I suppose. And it's one of the websites that I spend a decent amount of time on because I like hearing answers to questions. The website is essentially someone asks a question and people answer it. Now, just like anything on the internet, Wikipedia, uh, whatever, you're going to get answers that may not be correct. And definitely answers can be filled with a bias or slant towards a particular issue. But there's a lot of times on Quora where someone will answer who actually knows a lot about the subject, and I find that fascinating. Uh, from things of, what's it like to be a dump truck driver? And a dump truck driver will come in and explain what it's like. Or someone says, why are these flashing blue lights on top of these lights in the city? And they'll say, here is why. Someone will say, this is actually why. And I just find it fascinating. I'll find questions, which I never really questioned, and I'll think, well, why is that? Now, when you do start looking at them, I get an email, I think once a day usually, with a bunch of questions, and I almost always go to it, and then fall down a rabbit hole. Um, I like it. Sometimes it's just opinions. They'll be like, who's the most overrated actor of all time? And then people answer. But sometimes it also, they'll say, what does this person, what do you think this person thinks about this other person? And the person they're talking about actually shows up and answers the question. I just find it endlessly fascinating. It is a rabbit hole like many things on the internet are. And again, you take what you read there with a grain of salt. But there are some very well-written answers. And the best answers are often voted to the top. So you don't have to read every single answer to a question. And I just find it tremendously fascinating. So that's Quora. I, I really like going there. On today's episode of Charlie's Quick Reviews, we're going to be looking at Chronicles of Crime. Here's the rule book. Wait a minute. Chronicles of Crime requires a free app. You need an app? 
to play this game? Issue one, you need an app. Once an app becomes the main focus and how you move forward in the game, that's an issue. Part of the reason people play board games is so that they can socialize with their family members or friends or get together and put away their phones. Part of the fun of board games is interacting with that one-on-one -on -one conversation. When you develop an app and now people are on their phones, you introduce an element of distraction. Now people are gonna be looking at text messages. It just naturally happens. Our phones, the way social media is designed, is to distract us. So this is not a good long-term solution. That's a problem. Issue two. The cardboard is pointless. Once you dive into the app portion of it, you don't need the physical components of it, which is why app-based board games suck. Look at this. You don't think this could have been part of an app that someone else could have had these and looked this up, or you could just click something? The whole point of this paper is worthless. This is worthless paper. Why? Oh, great. We found the old lady. Now, let's scan another card. What's the Issue three, this is not a board game. Chronicles of Crime requires a free app which you can download from the Apple's App Store, or Google Play, blah, 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 blah. It's impossible to play without the app. It's impossible to play without the app, which means this is an app. This board elements are just secondary element to the app. Once you make it impossible to play a board game without having an app, you've now created an app with a board game as a secondary element. Issue four, it's innovative. <laughs> I don't want my board games to be innovative. I want them to be fun. And if it happens to be innovative in the meantime, that's great. But if it's just innovative for innovation's sake, that's a bunch of crap. Issue five, it's a single player game pretending to be a multiplayer game. The person who's doing this is the only one playing the game. Issue 8. It's flammable. See what I did there? Uh. Charlie. And this is the Dice Tower, folks, where we want to have people with different opinions. And even though that game was on my top 100, you can look at our list last year to see. Obviously, Charlie disagrees with me, but he's wrong. But I do want to talk about this briefly. This has been a very big thing on the internet these days about apps and board gamings. And it's not really an app. It's a video game. Uh, is something that's used a lot. So first of all, I don't believe... I don't even think there's any kind of proof that having an app be part of a game makes it less social. In fact, I would argue a couple things. If we're using the app to play Chronicles of Crime in this particular instance, then you can't be texting or doing other things on it because we're actually using the phone for something else. It actually reduces usage on a phone if you want to go down that route. But at the end of the day, I don't see that the app is any different than a deck of cards. It's almost like sometimes we have this Luddite fear of technology like, no, but this is a deck of cards on the app. Don't want the app in my board game. Don't be mixing them. Okay, fine. But I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't feel like the app draws away from the game, and you could argue and say, you don't need the cardboard. Well, guess what? You don't need like 50% of what comes in any board game, really. You don't need the big miniatures that come in. They could just be flat pieces of paper. You don't need uh, a deck of cards. You could just have a sheet of paper, roll a die, and pick one thing on that sheet of paper. You can always take things down to that specific thing. And then, is it a video game or a board game? Well, it's a board game because we're sitting around a table playing it, moving things around, losing, picking up cards. Yes, an app is a big chunk of that, but I look at the app as a tool, just like a dice are tools, or um, you know, the app integration in other games, or timers, or whatever. At the end of the day, it is super fun. And I think that's what matters. Does it matter whether I'm playing with miniatures or with chits? Doesn't matter if I'm rolling dice or looking at a very convoluted combat table. Doesn't matter if my game takes three hours or if it takes 30 minutes. I don't think so. It matters. Is the game fun? Do I enjoy it? And you know what? On our show, we often get all heated. We'll talk back and forth. Be like, your game is garbage. And we talk back and forth. And people can take that very seriously, especially in a review where I am more serious. And I'll say, I don't like this game at all. But I said this time and time again, I might say the game is the worst ever. But if I see you playing it, hooray, you're playing a board game. The worst board games, well, I shouldn't say the worst. There are some horrifically bad board games I wouldn't recommend anyone playing. But when I say the worst board games are games I don't like, games that everyone else likes and I despise them, they're still better than most other activities. This past Tuesday, I went to a game meetup and I took my bag of games, all my good games, 
were not there because they were on a ship <laughs> heading to the cruise. The whole Dice Tower library was gone. So I took my, my bag of trash. Uh, maybe not. I always look for games. Who knows what? And we played a whole pile of games. And every single one of them was bad. And I had a fantastic night. Because it wasn't the games. It's the people I play with. I had a great time. Wonderful time. So at the end of the day, I had a good time. And uh, I think I'm getting way off topic here. Charlie, you're wrong. Hello, and welcome back to Retro Board Game Corner. Here I have Crystal Maze, the time travel adventure game, published in 1991 by Milton Bradley. This is a two to four player game that is based off of the hit UK game show of the same name. Let me set this up and show you how it works. This is what the game board looks like set up. Everybody's gonna pick a different color pawn and it's gonna start at their corresponding color. On every turn, you will pick up the crystal dome and spin the ball inside, and whatever it lands on, you will just go ahead and count the notches, and that's how many spaces you will move for that turn. The game board is divided into four separate time zones. Each time zone has two challenges to it. The object of the game is to try to get one crystal from each time zone. Here are the challenges. Mix Quick Pyramid, Mystery Tower, Silicon Chip, Robo Arm and Proton Rod, Castle Keep, Agon Court, Tangram Scanner, Space Probe, and the final challenge, the Crystal Dome, to see how much gold you can get out of it. The Crystal Maze is a popular UK game show that ran from 1990 to 1995. It continues to air specials through 2019. Nickelodeon has picked up the series for a January 24th of this year release. Well, that's all the time I have for now. If you have a comment, comment below, or you can tweet them to me at RetroBoardGamer. And as always, may your rolls be high. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all of you joining me here on the Dice Tower Board Game Breakfast. I appreciate all my contributors. I'm always looking for new and interesting things, and they bring those new and interesting things each week. Join us for our videos over the course of this week. And until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching Board Game Breakfast. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.